I'd next like to introduce Ellie Magami. Uh, Ellie is a renowned expert in head and neck cancers. Uh, these are among the most devastating cancers we deal with because not only are they cancers that can take an individual's life, but they have functional and cosmetic consequences, uh, speech and swallowing issues, as, as well as uh, potential deformities. And she's been a leading figure in improving the care of patients with these devastating diseases. So. Good evening. I just want to simply say thank you. We can't do the work we do without the support that you guys provide. So thank you very much for extending yourselves and helping us um, achieve our goals and our missions and uh, hopefully contribute to cancer cure in a very meaningful way. Um, I also want to take a moment to uh, thank Stop Cancer Foundation for providing us really this opportunity. So. Um, before coming here, um, I was busy doing an eight-hour operation, and um, my patient was a 42-year-old male who barely spoke any English, who has never smoked a cigarette ever in his entire life, who now has advanced stage laryngeal cancer. The operation he had today was quite difficult. Um, he had to have his voice box removed and the nodes in his neck taken out, so obviously a very difficult operation for a 42-year-old. Um, this morning in the pre-op holding area before taking him back, he communicated by way of family photographs to me um, what he was going through and what he was experiencing. It was uh, basically his three boys, maybe five, seven, and eight. And, um, and you know, he just shared that with me just to make that connection. Uh, so head and neck cancer, as Dr. Rosen stated, is a difficult disease and uh, it really does cause significant uh, difficulties for patients. And uh, classically speaking, there, th there are three ways of treating it. Obviously surgery is one modality and then chemotherapy and radiation also are other modalities of therapy. But now, all of a sudden, there's an opportunity for a fourth pillar or fourth modality of therapy for head and neck cancer and that takes advantage of the body's own immune system. And so the immune system has the ability to separate self, which is normal and good, from non-self, which is threatening and bad. So um, I'm trying to take advantage of the immune system uh, and utilize the technology we have to engineer T cells to help me um, essentially investigate this as a novel therapy for head and neck cancer. We have excellent institutional experience uh, doing T cell engineering and uh, we have uh, first in human clinical trials that are FDA approved looking at CAR T cell or immune therapy application uh, for malignant brain tumors and uh, I'm very uh, lucky to have the ability to collaborate with the scientists who already have been so successful in the neuro-oncology clinical trials we had and be able to immediately translate that and transition that over to the head and neck lab. So I'm hoping to be able to use engineered T cells as uh, a new immune modality to attack head neck cancer. And head neck is, provides a good system for these types of experiments because it's exposed and it's approachable, it's accessible. So if you have a new drug or a new therapy, you can, you know, you can easily access it through the open mouth or with image guidance and you can experiment with these different um, uh, novel therapeutics and you can you know, measure uh, the impact of these therapeutics in an easy way with very minimum uh, morbidity to the patient. So these are things that you can do in the outpatient clinic setting and you can measure what it is that you're seeing and I think it's a good uh, opportunity. So again, I wanted to thank you all for the support of this project. Um, thank you.